Hey there, my name's Gavin. We are modeling a micro mouse project. And uh, last time we talked about subsystems and ports. So we have our 3D multi body system, that subsystem now, um, all contained within these ports. And uh, we haven't established the libraries yet, so that's why those question marks there, but we don't need that for today. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is the drive system. And we're going to start with an overview and that's all we're going to get into today. Um, so let me uh, talk about first what what's driving this mouse. All right. So first of all, we've already modeled these, but I want you to see them. These are the wheels. They're 32 millimeters by 7 millimeters. Nice rubber um, uh, grippy type of tires, and uh, we're then driving that wheel with this DC motor and it's got its own built-in gearbox attached so this is obviously spinning at a higher speed and then the gearbox gears it down and gives you more torque and lower speed and then we're monitoring you can see how there's a stub shaft out the back of this we're monitoring that with this little encoder um, kit so you attach it onto the motor and and then you can uh, see how your wheels are turning um, with kind of a quadrature um, feedback so we'll model that and these are the mounts that we're going to mount it to the uh, the PCB with so we can use these dimensions to get our um, the height of the of the wheel off of the PCB correct so that's kind of the overall of what we're trying to accomplish here oh and the last part is the H bridge driver this is an important thing too um, we're using the TI uh, DRV8833 which is a dual H-bridge um, driver and we'll go through and we'll model the logic of this and the current outputs and everything else um, so that we have a realistic drive system so we're going to consider this the last part that we have to model on the electrical side um, I should say the input to the electrical side the um, Magnetic encoders will be the output to the electrical side, and, and then the rest of our model will have more to do with control systems and that sort of thing. So, like I say, this is an overview, so these are the things we're going to model, but how do we architect the model? And that's the other big part of what I wanted to talk about today. So here's where we're starting. We just finished the subsysteming, you might say, of the, of the multi-body stuff. Um, so we're gonna kind of continue that um, and create another subsystem here and the last one we highlighted components and encased it down into a subsystem here we're creating the subsystem first and we'll create subsystems and components within it so I'm gonna call this motor driver sub um, and within this I'm going to get rid of the output and I'm going to um, create another couple of subsystems. One of them is going to be the H bridge. I should mention we're going to kind of, even though the chip itself has two H bridges and then there's two separate motors, um, we're going to just model this for efficiency's sake as if there's one H bridge to one motor to one gearbox that makes for a little bit cleaner architectural model and it's not a big deal to, to do it the other way but uh, that's how we're choosing to do this one um, so we have an H bridge model and the H bridge is going to take in like I said it's going to take in some inputs that are are going to be working going to consider them digital and then instead of having a, any kind of simulink or virtual or software output we're actually going to have connection ports and the connection port, as you might guess, from the H bridge out is going to be the uh, motor command. So that's going to be a voltage command. And this uh, is actually, you can think about this as if we're writing, if you're familiar with software development, it's like we're writing the functional signatures, um, or we're really developing the architecture of the model. Um, so here's the motor command. Now if I hit escape and go out. Oh, it's on the wrong side. It's on the left. I want it to be on the right, so we'll change it. Put it on the right. Good. Go 
go up a level. Now, the next thing in this little stack up is the motor, of course. So here I'm going to get rid of a virtual input and make another physical input. And this time, motor input is what I'll call it. And we're going to separate out the uh, motor from the gearbox. You know, the actual component has a motor and then bolted to it. I mean, you buy this as one unit, there's a gearbox. But it's a little easier to do some of the other things we need to do, especially with encoding, to separate them. So we're going to take motor input and make sure this is on the left. And uh, flip that around. And then we'll take what's the output of the motor? Well, it's going to be motor shaft out. Okay. Very good. Hit escape. Now, this isn't an H bridge one, this is the motor. And we'll make this a little bit bigger so we can read. Okay. And the last thing we're going to do is the gearbox. And we'll hop in there and say motor shaft in, and gearbox shaft out. Escape. And that's pretty good spacing. Okay, now we're in the motor driver subsystem, so we're going to make another connection block here. And this connection port is going to be right axle in, or excuse me, right axle out. And that's going to connect that way. And that's going to connect that way. And we won't connect the other parts just yet. Okay, and once we finish each of these boxes, then we'll just copy and paste and we'll create the other side of it, uh, no problem. And if we go up a level, um, oh, that right axle out's on the wrong side. Let's put it on the right side. Up a level, and here we go. So again, uh, we're, we're just kind of stubbing this out, um, talking about what the actual components are and then we'll zoom in. I just don't want you to lose context. We just finished what we're going to for the moment on the 3D multibody system. And then we took our right and left axle inputs and uh, put them on these rotational free ends, basically left, left them hang. Um, and then we're creating the subsystem for the drivers, which includes the H bridge, the motor, brush DC motor, and the gearbox that's gonna actually drive this. So once we're done with this, we'll have basically a software input. And um, you know what, I almost forgot. I almost forgot the, uh, I'm gonna copy and paste this one. I almost forgot this system, which is gonna be the encoder subsystem. And this one is gonna have not an input, but an output. And we're going to take in motor shafts. And this will be, actually, this will be on the left. And then you'll see why in a second. Because I'm going to turn it around. So we'll have a couple of these. Um, and basically, we'll, we'll create everything to drive the wheel and the 3D system and the stuff to and, um, feed back. And then these, system, uh, these signals will be the virtual inputs and outputs that we'll use for our control system. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll get into more detail next time. But for now, give me a like, give me a subscribe, um, and come back and see me soon. Thanks.